podcast. Thanks for coming by. It's good to have you here. Notice something missing? Glasses. I'm gone. I'm on my I'm on a trial pair of contacts. I uh, went to the eye doctor today. Got a trial pair of contacts. I'm ready to start wearing contacts again. This is my preferred look. Although, uh, getting another backup pair of glasses. Um, I didn't mean to wear glasses as much as I have been wearing. It's just I ran out of contacts, so I'm glad that happened. But also, I don't know if you can tell, my eyes are a little dilated still. Uh, not that one, not so much. But um, but yeah, so I've uh, had a little bit of a drive to uh, to go to the eye doctor, but uh, so it's been a little bit of a busy day, and here we are early in the afternoon for me doing my podcast. I normally do her in the morning, and I gotta admit, I'm not really feeling it. I'm not really feeling it. wanting to hit record and wanting to start and knowing that it's going to take at least a half an hour of talking and doing it all, and it's not so much like, okay, so one of the biggest, the biggest thing we've been doing in the Bible or in, in this podcast is being in the Bible, uh, re- reading chapter each day and just talking about it. And, uh, it's not always easy to get myself to do it, but, um, I've instilled a habit of getting it done every day, but I've also instilled a habit of doing it in the morning, which is something that, you know, it's, uh, good to do. But I think that, you know, sometimes we don't feel like spending time in the word it's not that so much right now it's i don't really want to do the podcast right now but whatever habits you're trying to uh develop good habits you're trying to develop uh even when you especially when you don't feel like it keep showing up keep doing it so there's my little motivation for you right now but yeah this is the podcast where we spend time in god's word as we go about our day uh first things for us at a time as we go about our days um I will say, just a little bit more housekeeping, uh, I've been thinking about this podcast more and more. I love reading a chapter, and I feel like that's something that's, I, I love reading and I love talking about it, because it gets, like, I am naturally, like, I'm, I'm curious about God's Word and what He means by it all, and it's something that I intend as a um, child of God, just being a lifelong student, wanting to learn and learn and learn, and really, like, I'd be, you know, planning on learning from Him for all of eternity. Um... But, uh, I might change the name of the podcast, I don't know, or I might just keep it at this, but, um, there might be more stuff mixed in besides spend time in the Word. Like, that is great, and I love to get to the point where I could do this longer, and who knows, maybe even do it live at some point, but, um, but yeah, just a couple things on my mind, but, uh, let's, uh, let's hop into, back into the Bible. So where we left off, we just finished Genesis uh, chapter 3. So that was all about the fall of man. And uh, I remember the biggest thing that made me curious was um, the last paragraph. At least in my, in my book, it's a paragraph in my Bible. Um, I don't know if the format is the same in all of them. But starting in verse 22 to the end, I'm just going to recap with. Then the Lord God said, uh, Behold, the man has become like one of us and is not in knowing good and evil let now lest he reach out his hand and take also of the tree of life and live forever and eat and live forever therefore the lord god sent him out from the garden of eden to work the ground from which he was taken he drove out the man and at the east of the garden of eden he placed a cherubim and a flaming sword that turned every which way to guard the way to the tree of life so yeah i remember really pondering that at the end of uh yesterday just because um First off, the tree of life. I think that's the first mention right there where it got it got mentioned. Um, and then because we knew about the the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And then also, um, if Eden is in the east to begin with, that means man had to come to the west. And it, but if they put to the east of the gardens, opposite of where he was originally taken, uh, the cherubim with the flaming sword. It makes me just a, a little curious as to why that, that was the case. Or maybe the angel was like standing over the garden. I don't know. I don't know. Um, but yeah, that's something I was, uh, I was pondering yesterday. But uh, so now we're going on chapter four. But before we begin, let's, uh, let's, say, let's say a prayer. Say, Lord, thank you that we may gather again to read from your word. May we feed on your word, get impart your knowledge, wisdom, and revelation to us as we are fed our daily bread. In Jesus' name, amen. 
So, chapter 4 deals all with the story of Cain and Abel. So, chapter 4. Here we go. Now Adam knew his... Uh, sorry. Now Adam knew Eve, his wife, and conceived and bore Cain, saying, I have gotten a man with the help of the Lord. And again she bore his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep, and Cain a worker of the ground. In the course of time, Cain brought to the Lord an offering of the fruit of the ground, and Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of, of their fat portions. And the Lord had regard for Abel and his offering. But for Cain and his offering, he had no regard. So Cain was very angry. And his face fell. And the Lord said to Cain, Why are you? Are you angry, and why has your face fallen? Uh, if you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin is crouching at the door. Its desire is contrary to you, but you must rule over it. Cain spoke to Abel, his brother, and when they were in the field, Cain rose up against his brother and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is Abel, your brother? He said, I do not know. Am I, am I my brother's keeper? And the Lord said, What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying to me from the ground, and now you are cursed from the ground, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood by your hand. When you work the ground, it shall no longer yield to you its strength. You shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth. Cain said to the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, you have driven me today away from the ground and from your face I shall be hidden I I shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth and whoever finds me will kill me then the Lord said to him not so if anyone kills Cain vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold and the Lord put a mark on Cain lest any who found him should attack him then Cain went away from the presence of the Lord and settled in the land of Nod, east of Eden. Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bore Enoch. Uh, when he built uh, a city, he named or he called the name of the city after the name of his son Enoch. Um, to Enoch was born Irad, and Irad fathered Mahujael. Mahujael fathered Methuselah, and Methuselah fathered Lamech, and Lamech took two wives. The name of the one was Ada, and the name of the other was Zillah. Ada bore Jabal. He was the father of those who dwell in tents and have livestock. His brother's name was Jubal. He was the father of all those who play the lyre and pipe. Zillah also bore Tubalcan. Uh, he was the forger of all instruments of bronze and iron. The sister of Tubalcan was Nema. Lamech said to his wives, Ada and Zillah, hear my voice, you wives of Lamech. Listen to what I say. I have killed a man for wounding me, a young man for striking me. If Cain's revenge is sevenfold, then Lamech's is seventy-sevenfold. And Adam knew his wife again, and she bore a son and called his name Seth. For God said, God has appointed for me another offspring instead of Abel, Abel for Cain killed him. So to Seth also was a uh, son was born, and he called his name Enosh. Uh, at that time, people began to call upon the name of the Lord. All right. So that was chapter four. And, uh, there's some interesting stuff here. This is where uh, traditionally for me is a little bit, I don't know, I found, myself, I found it a little harder for me to read from the Old Testament. Um, not 100% sure why that is. I just know that, you know, with, you know, the New Testament being much of the Old realized, um, I think I might have just neglected the importance of going back and reading from the, uh, from the Old. But, uh, but yeah, let's let's uh, let's take a look at what happened here. But um, so Adam knew Eve, 
his wife and conceived uh, and she conceived and bore Cain saying I have gotten a man with the help of the Lord and again she bore his brother Abel um, you know what's really funny right there I notice so I think I, I'm taking it as if Adam and Eve were the first two humans Cain and Abel would be third and fourth but what's really interesting of the sons here it says, uh, again, she bore his brother Abel. Abel came second and was a keeper of sheep. And Cain, a worker of the ground. Cain came first. I can't help just notice that the, the um, synonym, or synonym. I think there's a metaphor there of where. So Cain came first. He was a worker of the ground. And Adam came first. And was cursed to uh, work of the ground. All men was was cursed through him. But then Abel was a keeper of sheep. You know who also was a keeper of sheep? Jesus. So I just immediately noticed that. I think that's awesome to see. I think it's just a little, little uh, beautiful. Uh, and we'll talk about. Like this, the first book of the Bible, the story is very old, but I feel like it points to the whole redemptive story. Like this whole, this whole Bible is really a, uh, a love letter from God. And I, you can just tell that it's very much by design, you know, this is, um, and actually more so on the science front, I think it's, uh, you know, you know, one of the, one of the debates, basically, you know, so, okay, so the belief that we're here by accident and everything happens by accident, well, one of the reasons why, like, I really don't think it could be an accident is because just how, like, it really feels like there's a designer to it all, and I feel like that is God, and God, you know, designing, even in the scriptures, like, foreshadowing that like sin entered through um through adam who was cursed to work the ground and jesus um be then sent to save them and be the keeper of sheep um in the course of time came brought to the lord an offering of the fruit of the ground and abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat portions. And the Lord had regard for Abel and his offering, the firstborn of his flock and of their fat portions. Okay. But for Cain, he had no, in his offering, he had no regard. If, you know. God. Like, I, like, I, I, I think that just that, that kind of metaphor between the two, I think, I think it really continues on into those verses as well. But so Cain was very angry and his face fell. I think what I mean, like, 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 I think it's said before in scripture, it might even said in Matthew. I feel like it wasn't that long ago that I read, like when someone's face fallen, like they've fallen on their face, he goes to pray think i think i don't remember completely but he fell on his face it's interesting because like when he's angry i don't know if he'd be praying there but the lord, the lord said to cain why are you angry and why has your face fallen if you do well will you not be accepted and if you do not do well sin is crouching at the door its desire is contrary to you but you must rule over it. You know what's interesting? Okay, so its desire is contrary to you. If we go to last chapter, when the Lord spoke to Eve. Okay, so um, starting, so Genesis started chapter 3, verse 16. To the woman he said, I will surely multiply your pain and childbearing, and in pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be contrary to your husband, but he shall rule over you. Okay, interesting, but that the middle of that verse where this says your desire shall be contrary to your husband your desire shall be contrary to your husband and um 
And over here, in, at towards the end of verse 7, it says, Its desire is contrary to you, but you must rule over it. Interesting, because that, that, where I read from over there, it said, But he shall rule over you. So, but you must rule over sin. Interesting. See, I, I, I okay. <laughs> I'm going to keep going. Cain spoke to his brother, and when they were in the field, Cain rose up against his brother and killed him. Then Jesus said to Cain, hey, where is your brother? Uh, where is Abel, your brother? He said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And the Lord said, what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying to me from the ground. And now you are cursed from the ground, uh, which has which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you when you work the ground, it shall no longer yield to you its strength. So he was cursed to work the ground. Well, like Adam was, and I answered through him. But now he said, now this is saying, you uh, you are cursed from the ground, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you work the ground, it shall no longer yield to you its strength. You shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth. Cain said to the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, you have driven me today away from the ground, and from, and from your face I shall be hidden. I shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth, and whoever kill, finds me will kill me. Then the Lord said to him, Not so. If anyone kills Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. It's interesting. So, basically, tell him Cain, see, Cain he's cursed. Cain said, I can't bear it. You know, whoever finds me is going to kill me. And he said, not so. If anyone kills Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. Or shall be taken on him sevenfold. So, that's just like two different, like, you feel like, he, he, you know, God could have been like, oh, well, you know, you spilled your brother's, brother's blood. What do you want me to do about it? Um, but the, he didn't even ask. He just cried out and said, I can't do this. And, and, and the Lord said that, no, um, but, you know, you'll be avenged sevenfold. And the Lord put a mark on Cain. Lest anyone who found him should attack him. I wonder what the mark was. I wonder. Um, then Cain went away from the presence of the Lord and settled in the land of Nod, east of Eden. So, hold on. Um, so, he went away from the presence of the Lord and settled in the land of Nod. I don't know if it said anything about Nod yet. I don't remember if it did. But east of Eden now. Which means it would he would have to travel west to go to Eden through in the east side of Eden, so what would be between him and Eden would have been that cherubim with the flaming sword. But that's not necessarily like, like I remember like why was that on the east side? Well now Cain has been sent or he went to the land of Nod, which is east. I don't know, that's just I don't know why. Uh, that's 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 interesting. Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bore Enoch. When he built a city, he called the name of the city uh, after the name of his son Enoch. Um, to Enoch was born Irad, and Irad fathered Mahujael, and Mahujael fathered Methusael, Methusael. Uh, Father Lamech and Lamech took two wives. So we're getting some. I think this is like some genealogy. It's always been a little hard for me to take from that. I mean, like number one thing is I wonder what all these names mean because I know that there's significance in that. So I think I'd really like to know what these names mean. Um, and Lamech took two wives. The name of the one was Ada, and of the other was Zilla. I can't help but notice there, and I think I mentioned this in the book of Matthew. Why is it that it's referred to as the name of the one 
And wait, 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 hold on. The name of the one was blank, and the name of the other was blank. It's, why is it one and the other? Why is there other? Like, it's funny, because, like, when somebody has the same name as me, if I'm referred to as the other, it's bothered me. And I'm not 100% sure why. But it's just word choice. I think it's all intentional. I know, I know it's been translated, but I wonder. I, I makes you wonder. You know, it just makes you wonder. Um. So Ada bore Jabal. He was the father of those who dwell in tents and have livestock. His brother's name was Jubal. So Jabal and Jubal, like really close uh, names, one letter difference. Um, he was the father of all those who play the lyre and the hawk pipe. Zilla also bore Tubal Cain. Um, so Zilla was the one who. Yeah, so Ada had Jabal and Jubal. Zilla bore, also bore Tubal Cain. Tubal Cain. He was the forger of all instruments of bronze and iron. The sister of Tubal Cain was Nema. And then it just goes to, <laughs> wait, it mentions Nema, but then it just continues on. Why? I don't know. That's, so Lamech said to his wives, Ada and Zilla, hear my voice. You wives of Lamech, listen to what I say. I've killed a young man for wounding me, a young man's, young man for striking me. Uh, if Cain's revenge is sevenfold and Lamech's is seventy-sevenfold. So what's going on with Lamech here? And also, God was the one who said that Cain had avenged sevenfold. Now he's basically calling for himself to have seventy-sevenfold. I'm confused. Right there. That's all. And Adam knew his wife again, and she bore a son and called his name Seth. So, because, let's see, they had Cain and Abel. Cain was cursed to be a wanderer and a fugitive, and Abel was killed. So now they had Seth, and, for, uh, and called his name Seth, for she said... See, like, he was named it. Okay, okay, hold on. And Adam knew his wife again, and he bo she bore a son and called his name Seth, for she said, like... The way this is written makes you think that that's why he was named it. So I really think the, name, the meanings matters here. God has appointed to for me another offspring instead of Abel, for Cain killed him. I wonder what that means. To Seth, also a son was born. And his name and he called his name Enosh. At that time people began to call upon the name of the Lord. How do you think they knew how to call upon the name of the Lord? Interesting. Hmm. So, and I'm jumping ahead, like I'm doing math in my head real quick. So, um, so Adam was 130 when he had Seth, and Sedith was 105 when Enosh was born. And Enosh is who was talked against. So, um, Adam would have been 235 when he, Enosh would have been born. Um, hmm. And he still lived around. Like, that's what, the weird thing, too, is when you're going through all this genealogy is just how long all of them were alive. But, um, which is something, you know, we'll get to a little uh, later on. Actually, it might even be at, towards the end of, that. that's getting into tomorrow's chapter. But, um, that was Genesis 4, and we are done with the reading, at least, or done, like, going over it. Um earlier than we typically are with this but um um uh, 
just um, seeing if there's anything that catches my eye here. I guess I want to come back and just see, like, what is going on with um, – So Cain said to the Lord, my punishment is greater than I can bear. And I can bear, behold, you have driven me today away from the ground, and from your face I shall be hidden. I shall be a fugitive and a wanderer of the earth, and whoever finds me kill me, um, will kill me. Um, curse from the ground, be a fugitive and a wanderer. Um, I wonder what part it was that Cain said that caught made the Lord say what he said. Or I wonder why it happened like this. Cause okay, so Cain said, Behold, you have driven me today away from the ground. Well, let's see what the well, what did the Lord say? Um and now you are cursed from the ground. So yeah, he drove him away from the ground. From your face shall be hidden. I think it was after that I shall be a fugitive and a wanderer from the earth and whoever finds me kills me. So he did tell me uh or Lord the Lord said, going back up to uh ver Verse 12, second half, verse 12, you shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth. But there were two things, one of them might be implied. Two things Cain said that the Lord did not say. Cain said, um, from, and from your face I shall be hidden. So that mean, does that mean, was he driven away from the presence? Or is it after that? It says it. No, it was later than Cain was, uh, went away from the presence of the Lord. Um, but like, I don't think God hit his face. I don't, I don't know if that's safe to say that he did. Um, but Cain said, and whoever finds me will kill me, which he killed his brother, you know, um, but then it's not so with an exclamation point. So this very much changes in en energy. Not so. If anyone kills Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. Now the Lord put a mark on Cain, lest anyone who found him should attack him. What mark could he have put on him? I don't know. It makes me wonder. Um, but then, Lamech. So what do we know about Lamech before we get to what he said? Um, Methuselah. Uh, so, so Lamech is a descendant of Cain directly. A few generations. Let's see. It would have been Cain, Enoch, Irad, Methuselah, Methuselah. And Lamech would have been the fifth one, I think, down from him. And Lamech took two wives, Ada and Zillah. Ada bore uh, Jabal. He was the father of those who dwell in tents and have livestock. I don't know. When I see something about tents, I think about how the Israelites were. I know when in uh, Exodus and whatnot, like, I know that they slept in tents. So maybe there's some symbolism there. I'm not sure. And have livestock. And his brother's name was Jubal. Uh, he was the father of all those who played the lyre and the pipe. I don't know my instrument so well. but And then Zillah was, uh, was also bore Tubal Cain. And Tubal Cain, he was a forger of all instruments of bronze and iron. The sister of Tubal Cain was Nema. Why does it say Nema? Does it say Nema again? 22, does it? It doesn't have anything on it, no references on that verse. That's why, like, it just it just throws out there, like, like the name, and it's but it doesn't continue on. But then Lamech said to his wives, Ada and Zella, hear my voice, you wives of Lamech. Wait. Yeah, you wives of Lamech. So he's speaking in the third person? Listen to what I say. I have killed a man for wounding me, a young man for striking me. If Cain's revenge is sevenfold, then Lamech's is seventy-sevenfold. That sounds self-righteous. I don't know. 
I mean, obviously, okay, so one thing I want to say, and, you know, we're, we're, getting, we're at our half an hour mark now, so we're going to be wrapping up here. But the one thing I want to say is I'm not just – and when we read the Bible, we just need to have an open heart, open mind. But I think it's good to ask questions. And I think the more we um, pursue those answers, the more we'll learn, the more we'll be, um, the more we'll give God's wisdom, we'll have imparted to us, and he'll give us revelation. But there's just a lot of these things that show, like, I'm honest, I'll tell you, I'm not an expert on these. These are just things that I'm reading and I'm curious about. And if you have any insight, you know, as a Christian, reading along, you got any questions, I'd love to take part in conversation with you. You want to say something down below i will uh, I'll respond to you but uh that's gonna end up for where we are today that is genesis chapter four and tomorrow we'll be in genesis chapter five thank you so much for stopping by to study some with me i hope you guys are having an awesome day and i'll talk to you guys again tomorrow see ya